Welcome to another episode of Feel Free, the only podcast that'll tell you to chase your dreams and call you out on all your bullshit, myself included. On this episode, I got my buddy Edgar here today. How you doing? Doing good. Doing good. We're both a little nervous for some odd fucking reason, but I don't know, maybe it's because we didn't prepare too much, but our conversations are inspiring to say the least when, when we have them, obviously. So I said, why don't we just record them so today we're going to be talking a little bit about content creation struggles behind that maybe social media staying healthy in all those areas uh edgar is a content creator uh video editor and he's also a streamer too what do you what do you stream right now currently i mean i just stream a little bit of everything honestly uh, i play a lot of video games so honestly just once a week i just try to promote a positive space for people and just have a good time while doing it. I enjoy playing video games. And like like you said, I was like, why not just record it? Like, why not just share it with the world? So right. that's kind of why I started doing that. But I just play video games. Sometimes I do reactions. Might do a little bit of karaoke soon. Who Ooh. knows? So it's going to be growing. Um, but like like you were saying, um, it's the first official podcast of ours. I feel like we've had a lot of good conversations and we've had a lot of secret podcasts where the world have not, hasn't seen yet. So... And yeah, it's nice that we get to share this with the world, an open conversation. and It's fun. <laughs> right, right. I think that most of the times where we come here and we just chat about what we're doing with the podcast and everything, and then we tangent off into more inspirational topics about our life and where we want to see it and the work that goes into it. And it's nice because both of us get a little discouraged about where we're at, but then we also try and like motivate and pump the other person up. Right. And we haven't recorded it. So now this is the first time that we are going to record it. I've actually hopped in on some of your streams too. Appreciate whether that. you whether you notice it or not, I think I think you were like saying I mean, I I forgot what I said. I typed in the chat one time because you were talking about something random. And uh, I think you were playing Fortnite then? Probably. Yeah. And that's 90% of my streams playing Fortnite. For sure. Appreciate the lurking, though. It's always, I always see random people. Some people don't say hi, but it's just like, ah, oh, someone's watching, you know? I, I sometimes do get discouraged because it's like, what happens if only one person's watching? So I, tr I try not to think about the number because at the end of the day, it's like, I'm just, I'm trying to have a good time and I'm trying to enjoy myself and anybody wants to join me in doing that then you know they can join me if nobody wants to join me it's like hey at least at the end of the day like i know what i'm doing i'm having a good time and i'm i'm promoting a good time so if people want to join that cool awesome i i appreciate all the lurks like it's dope it's the support that mm -hmm. counts uh when i hopped in i think there was five people actually in the stream too i mean i joined yeah i joined uh i made a i titled it like five year ago because i was like you know it's usually like my wife me and then maybe one one other person hopping in and out so i was just like let me let me see if i can get five people in here and you know a lot of my friends did show some support and i was like oh, i appreciate you guys like you know nice. it's been it's been kind of a struggle trying to stay consistent with that like i told myself i've been wanting to stream for like a really long time and I was just like, what, what's stopping me? So I've honestly been watching this dude on TikTok. He's been popping up on my feed, just consistent, consistent, like videos of him saying like, you just do it. Like, you know, being like inspirational, motivational and just saying like, hey, like you say you want to do it. So just just do it. Like, you know, and I feel like we've had that conversation a lot of times where we're like not sure what we want to do or how we're going to go about it. And, you know, I honestly enjoy just those open conversations with people saying like, hey, like. I know this is one of your dreams. I know this is one of your goals. How you're gonna get there? That's 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 up to you. But just having another person hear you out and on, on all that, and not like ju feel judged or anything. Like this man's crazy. He's trying to like, what is he trying to do? Like you know, just go get a job and you know that there you go. But it's like, yeah, I feel like a lot of people are more open to just being able to enjoy that and being able to like, hey, I want to do more than just get a career and live my nine to five. I want to live. Um, which kind of I'm going to get off track here a little bit. But like, yeah, like I, I feel like a struggle I've had is being able to just be in that present moment and just like live. And work is not one of those things that I want to live for, like doing my working. Like that's that's not life. Like I want to be able to go my day by day and live and just have 
have a good time, honestly. That's why I wanted to go into streaming, going into like content creation, because I want to share that with the world, be able to tell them like, hey, like we're all in kind of a same spot. Like we're all in a weird space. Like I'm 25 right now. Like I feel like I've I've wanted to be ahead of where I'm at currently. And so a lot of times I'm just like, I got to take a chill and just take a breather. Like, like you say, uh, what's this one saying? Like ease up, like just ease, ease up, up, bro. Yeah. Like, so I, sometimes I just got to ease up and be like, all right, just enjoy the moment. Like you've dreamt of this moment before and you're finally there. And I, I know that I, we all get these dreams and we want to be somewhere else, but it's like, Hey, like we wanted to be here too at, at some point in our life. And so we got to enjoy that. And, just keep on living, honestly. Right. Not get too down on yourself. Be too hard on yourself. On the last episode that I was talking with Aiden, I also mentioned to him that I do get down on myself. I'm like comparing myself to the John in like 10 years, right. you know, because I'm like, we want to be somewhere else than right now or more successful realistically. But then like you had stated, like in one way or another, we have dreamed of being where we're at right now. And I think having a a healthy dose of gratitude for that is is key to enjoying life and uh, being grateful for what we have because you know me dealing with my my addiction and the sobriety thing like I have to be grateful where I'm at right now because the person I was 10 years ago is not even comparable to who I am right now yeah just being grateful for that's huge and I know that we talk a lot about staying consistent with creating the content and we get down sometimes you know working a normal nine to five job, 40 hours a week, it's tiring, it's exhausting, but we have to do it to pay the bills and survive. You know, we go on social media and we compare ourselves to other people, right? Whether we think we're doing it or not. What I try to remind myself of is I view like a normal job as like we're surviving at this point. You know, it's not like we're thousands of years in the past where it's like, I got to till the fields and acquire my food and shelter at this point. Right now, money is how you acquire these things, right? So you do have to maybe work a job that you're not too thrilled about right now and cut your spending and save up for things, you know? And it gets discouraging. You'd probably rather be doing content creation and streaming every day, just like I would rather be doing the podcast or writing books, but got to enjoy the process. For sure. And I think we're both learning that about our lives right now, which is nice, which is why we're having this conversation, you know? I totally agree with you. And I, I see like, we definitely do need a balance, but at the same time, we, we do got to remember we have responsibilities. At the end of the day, we need food on our plates. We need a nice shelter. We need to live. But at the same time, like that's that's not your whole life, you know? Like that's why I feel like content creation is, is such a great way to just be able to like explore things, be able to explore things about yourself that you didn't know and just like find out new things and live for those new experiences. And honestly, I do agree with you how you say uh, gratitude is very important. Because like, yeah, like right now, like social media, all you see is like people like showing off or like, I got money, I got this big house, I got, I got these big things, which is, it's great. And on like, you know, I try sometimes I get in that headspace where it's like, I get jealous or I get upset. I'm just like, why you or like, you know, like just like, and I feel bad because like, that's not right either. Sometimes I got to step back and be like, hold on, like these people are working for this too, you know, and they achieve that something we've we've all have always dreamed of and and they have it why should i judge them for that it's like hey i, I bet you've done a lot of hard work and I, to get there so at the same time it's like i don't want to focus on social media and thinking like oh dang be be a space where i'm just jealous or angry at myself all the time because of all these beautiful things i see but also in in social media in general there's a lot of just negativity out there and a lot of people being like fake or like it just gives off a weird vibe, an off vibe. So I feel like with like your podcasts and, and like your group of friends or the content you guys are making, it's like positivity. It's like, hey, like I'm doing this. I'm trying to reach my goals and I'm going to show you guys how I'm doing that. And, and I think I think the world needs more more people like that expressing that into the world because then it helps others see that and be like, hey let me get off of that judgmental space and let me just look and be like hey like i can do this too if i really put my effort and be determined i can i can do that so it's nice like we talked about before i do slip up my friends slip up we all slip up and that space you're talking about on social media like we only see like the wins usually we only see the w's but we don't see all the hard work that those people have put in to get where they're at so we think by watching 
a few poster videos of people being successful that we're going to vicariously live through that, you know, and that's just not how it works. I do struggle with being consistent with my positivity. I like having people like Brandon or my brother or a bunch of other guests come on the podcast and just talk about their struggles, how we're going to reach our goals. And like we, like you said earlier, like we don't really know how we're going to, right? But I think just getting your feet wet, just doing it. Like I don't like posting reels. I hate it. You know, I don't like posting too much. I would much rather be going on walks and listening to lo-fi and coming back and just writing, you know, that, that would make me happy. I'm not just some nomad, you know, this isn't thousands of years ago where I can do that. I'm trying to also chase this dream and get to a point where I don't have to work a nine to five to support myself. So we've got to realize that we have to do things that make us uncomfortable and it sucks coming to that. And that's the same thing with like physical wellness too. For a long time, I didn't like going to the gym because I had social anxiety, um, just dealing with like the addiction and stuff like that. You know, you just got, you just got to do it. You know, if you don't have the tools to like do home workouts and shit like that, you, you got to go to the gym. It's uncomfortable as hell. I don't like it. Every, there's a whole bunch of like human pheromones in the air. It's like a zoo pretty much, you know, and everybody's like eye goggling each other. And it's like, <laughs> don't look at me. Just, you know, put your headphones on and go after it. But uh, doing things that make you uncomfortable, doing them more often uh, it helps you out in the long run is what I've realized. Yeah, I do, I do feel like a lot of people do get like, especially after COVID, like we all kind of just shelled up and we're like, don't don't talk to me. Like, I'm going to just I'm just going to shell up and we're going to wait and see what happens. Right. And so I did notice, too, for me, like my anxiety has gotten worse. Like before I was just like, I don't have anxiety. Like I'm I'm chilling. Like I'm a confident dude. And then after COVID, I've kind of seen myself like, hold up, like why am I anxious? Like, I'm just at like a bar or I'm at a restaurant. Why am I feeling like people are looking at me weirdly, like judgmental eyes? And I feel like we all go through those things. And for, for a, at a certain extent, some people do say that, like for guys, people go like, oh, like it's just tough it up. Like, you're not, you're fine. Like, don't worry about it. You're not anxious. Don't be a bitch or so, something like just toxic masculinity stuff. And it's like, if we all have, just open conversations with each other i feel like that also helps promote like and ease up on that anxiety of people we're all going through that we're all thinking the same thing and it's like no one's really out there judging you more than you you are judging yourself and it's like okay sometimes you just breathe and just enjoy life enjoy your experiences and stop putting so much pressure and don't feel like people are being judgmental and yeah i just feel like open conversations help ease that the anxiety and ease that that feeling <laughs> right well like you said there there's toxic masculinity and the mental health of men in general is obviously pretty low <laughs> you know or how seriously it is taken with the older generations i have noticed that men in the millennial generation have been taking things more seriously in terms of going to see therapists specifically, you know, that vulnerability or having these conversations with each other, which is extremely important because, you know, it's not just like rub some dirt in it, toughen up. We're, we're human. We have these feelings. I'm not just some AI generated robot or some, I'm not like a warrior from a thousand years ago where it's like you, you eat, fight and kill. Like that's not <laughs> what we are at a point we were, you know, but now we're in this day and age where technology is evolving faster than we know what to do with it we yeah we just don't know where we're at right now so trying to traverse that landscape together is huge like having these conversations about social media about chasing our dreams about being healthy like this is this is why i started the podcast actually you know try to help people feel free right um and i know you you actually told me to start doing this i know this was going to be at the end of the episode but i wanted to ask it right now what do you do to make to help you feel free I knew this question was coming. I was, I was hoping, I was like, I hope John remembers to ask this question. But honestly, um, after thinking about it for a little bit, I feel like meditating has helped me feel free by just being present, being able to just calm my nerves, calm my anxiety and just breathe for like a couple minutes, relaxing, whether it's at the beginning of my day or at the end of my day, that helps me feel free because it helps me be present and enjoy the moment instead of worrying about I got this bill due or 
I got to get this uh, this job finished or, you know, just things that bring anxiety. So I feel like meditation has helped definitely made me feel free just to be present because I feel like, yeah, that present moment is is the most important. Like I, I love Kung Fu Panda. A lot of a lot of shows, movies I watch, it, it talks about this this theme of like present moment, being authentic, being yourself and just being able to enjoy life. So I feel like, yeah, meditation helps me do that. I've on, honestly also wondered what helps you feel free. What helps me yeah. feel free? I haven't really talked about that a lot. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> so what makes, what helps me feel free? Um, like I said earlier, I do, th- I do dabble a little bit with dropping little hints of what I do in episodes. Everybody knows that I love playing basketball. And tragically, I have rolled my ankle again yesterday. Again, once again. <laughs> once again, you know, um, that's what I get for flying around, <laughs> literally jumping like a madman all the time. So playing basketball helps me feel free. Even if I'm not playing with other people, I like going to the gym, throwing my headphones on and just doing an hour, hour and a half workout with dribbling and shooting drills and stuff. It's cathartic for me. It's just it, it helps me. Other things that help me feel free, I do love playing video games. Right now, I haven't played in over a month, mostly because I don't have any new games to play, and also I have other hobbies that I'm doing. I've been reading a lot, which is good. After having that conversation with Aiden about the Stoicism, I picked up uh, one of my Stoicism books by Seneca, Letters from a Stoic. So that's nice. I read like six or eight pages about that. I've been writing a lot lately. And also what I said earlier, honestly, I love throwing my headphones on and I just go on walks. It's, I go on walks a lot. I do different routes around where I live. I had for on my Christmas list, family members buy me uh, specific winter clothing to help me go on walks in the winter. So it just helps me. It helps free myself. Yesterday I was sitting down to write. I didn't have anything to write. I was like, ah, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. So I threw my headphones on and I went on a 40 minute walk and I came back and I just wrote. It, it completes me. I don't know. Just writing. I don't even have to be writing for a purpose. Like, it's not like I'm trying to like finish the book sometimes. Sometimes I just fill a page with a journal and I just feel great, you know? Yeah. Just like that opportunity of like being consistent with yourself, making that routine, building your routine that fulfills you. I love that. I, I love hearing different people's like, what? What well, yeah, what do you do on your day to day? What do you like to like time is we have so little time, you know, but we have so much time at the same time. It's weird, but like time is one of those most important things that is like, how are you using your time? I get like life can be so much at times that like we get overwhelmed and we fill our time with like things that are bad for us or like we overindulge in some things or we we try to escape where we're at where you know whether it's like going on a tiktok hole doing drugs like i feel like a lot of that is us trying to escape ourselves because we're so hard on ourselves of we're not where we want to be or you're not doing what you told yourself you should be doing so yeah i feel like you've built this routine or you're, you're building this routine of being able to find things that you want to look forward to live for and not don't hold yourself up and just be able to experience the world and enjoy that. And that that's what makes you feel free, being able to like live. I feel like a lot of people forget to live. And as stupid as that sounds or as crazy, that, I don't know. It's just we need to rem- remember like, hey, we just got to live a little bit. <laughs> like we just got to enjoy. It. We forget to live because we're too worried about surviving almost. I like how you say that because, like, growing up, I feel like I've always, like, survived. Like, backstory for everybody. Like, when I was 17, I moved out of my house. Like, I was just like, no, I need to, I need to get out of here. It wasn't a good space for me. Just with, like, my parents, like, they're always arguing, fighting. And I'm, me as a kid, I was like, hey, I told my mom, I was like, you need to kick my stepdad out. Like he, he's not right for you. He's he's not a good influence on us. Like I need him out of here. If you don't leave, if he doesn't leave, I'm gone. And mind you, this was a random Wednesday of the week. I just wake her up out of bed before I go to school at like six in the morning. And I dropped this bomb on her. And she's like, what are you talking about? Like, you're crazy. Like, 
don't bother me with this. Like, you're stupid. You're, you sound crazy. And then I was like, all right, well, I'm out then. I'm leaving by Friday or something. And I moved out that same week. Thinking back at it, I was like, that was kind of a bad way to go about it. But like, I mean, I, ne- I didn't know how to go about it either. But that opportunity was like that time off was able to like away from home was able to give me the freedom and like, excuse me, or, <laughs> it was <laughs> it was able to give me the time and like the freedom to just go into myself without having to be in survival mode. Like uh, I was living at with a friend and his family and they were just like a regular family. And I was like, wow, like this is so weird. Like y'all have dinner, y'all talk to each other. Like me, it was more of like, like I go to school, I go home, I go on my phone, like not saying I had a horrible childhood, like it was a great, like, you know, my family did play board games. We had a good time. We enjoyed ourselves. But at the time, it was just like a lot of toxic stuff going on, just bad influences in the world. So when I moved out, I was able to like just learn a lot. And now my family has gotten way closer than ever. And I feel it's because we've all kind of experienced different things and then been able to come back and just, hey, I know these things were wrong, but look, we're here now and we're living now and all we have is this time now like recently my grandfather passed away and like that was tragic but it it did bring us all closer in a sense and even though our family's not perfect it's like now i feel we're at the stage of hey we can have these open conversations like i'm i know there is a lot of like hate towards each other a lot of anger but it's like hey we've been able to realize like we're not perfect like we all do things that we shouldn't do but at the end of the day, it's like, I want to be able to enjoy my time with you. And I know it's not going to be forever. So let's let's let our bygones be bygones and just be able to enjoy the moment and live with each other and try to, like, help each other. Like, we don't have to be stuck in this this life of hatred and anger. Like, let's, let's take a second. Let's take a moment and don't judge each other. Like, like it's we're our family. We should be able to enjoy each other. So. Well, having that perspective is huge and realizing, you know, cause I always rag on, we, I rag on my family a lot, you know, especially with my upbringing and things that I've talked about, but having that perspective, you know, change, like you got to realize what you have, you know, still have each other here to love and spend time together. You know, there's some stuff that you can't change your past, you know, but you can sure as hell make the present moment a little better with a little more love and compassion and forgiveness is what I've learned. Although I think we all struggle a little bit with channeling that, but it's a very mature thing to do to, to look at life the way you did and be where you're at right now. Also what we were talking about before, when we get down on ourselves with the routines and stuff, sometimes we just, we don't hold ourselves accountable for the change you made when you were 17. You said you were going to do something and you did it. Like I'm moving out, did it. That's like, it's a pretty big deal, especially because you're counting on yourself at that point. Granted, you had somewhere to go, but at the same time, you trusted yourself enough. You're like, I got to do this for me. You can look at it as good or bad, right? I got kicked out of my house when I was 19. They're like, you just can't live here. And rightfully so, I was fucking out of my mind, you know? Um, But I do tell them, I do tell my mom to this day that I'm very grateful that she did that for me because... I wouldn't, er- we, we don't realize what we have, you know, until it's too late. Right. Doing the work on ourselves right now, realizing what we have, and being grateful for it is how we can live in the moment and enjoy it, you know? It's, uh, it's crazy coming to those realizations, honestly. Life just comes at a full circle sometimes. It's like, damn, like, things really do happen for a reason. Like, I don't, I'm not a religious dude. I was, but like, it's crazy sometimes just when you go through your life and you see how things happen and looking back at it, it's like, wow, like I'm here after all of this. Like I'm still here from what, regardless of what happened. And the, God does give his hardest battles to his strongest soldiers, whatever the saying is. Like we have to experience these things to learn and grow. Like if I've never, if we didn't get out of our comfort zone and like get kicked out or move out, like if we didn't do that, I don't really know where my family would be at that at that point, like where how our life would be. So like, yeah, it sucks that those things happen, but like they have to happen sometimes. And 
it's not always going to be easy. It's not always going to be fun. Like you're going to struggle, but those struggles help you and help people like just be able to have these conversations and be like, hey, like it's all right. Like this is how we can do better and feel present, feel free, free, feel happy. Like it sucks that it happened to, have to us, but like <laughs> we can't control it. Did. You know, it does suck that those things happen, but if life was perfect, I don't think it would be worth living. That's just how I look at it. If there wasn't struggle, you wouldn't realize how, how, how good it can be. You know, you got to go through those struggles. And I've met a lot of people in my life who don't look at the signs that the universe sends you or they don't look at their past. They don't learn from it. And for, for a time, I didn't, you know. I, uh, I covered up all of the, the mistakes I made. You know, you bury them deep down. You don't face them because you're ashamed of who you are. And that doesn't help you grow, you know. So you, you have to make those moves and you have to see the signs that the universe is sending you in order to grow and you got to be grateful for them because you could keep like shying away and turning your head away from the things you're supposed to learn in order to heal and be better but you're just going to chase your tail you know or you're going to live under a rock and be a hermit which <laughs> which i've done before as well you know so coming out of your shell coming out of your comfort zone realizing what you have these are these are huge moves i see it in a lot of people and like just me going through that, like I'm I'm a very forgiving person because at the end of the day, like I think about it like, what if that was me? Like I'm one of the youngest out of all my siblings. I got to, ex I didn't get to experience the same things they, they, they've struggled with or they experienced. I bet they had it a lot harder and way worse than I did. You know, me thinking like, oh, so much bad crap happened to me. It probably wasn't even like as crazy as what happened to them or I can, I can only imagine but that's why I'm such a like forgiving person because I know like the struggles and the hardships a lot of people face and I don't try to judge them for it and I you know sometimes it, we're all human we all judge people we all make assumptions like that's totally normal but being able to just to step back and and listen to someone and give them advice and just be like hey it's gonna be all right a lot of people do do struggle with getting out of that and, and it, it, sometimes it does suck just seeing people stuck in that loop. And I feel like if we're just all have, show a little bit of compassion and we're all just kind of guide them, like they're not going to listen to it the first time. But if you're just consistently there, that that does make a difference. And I feel like a lot of people need to be like forgiving and need to share that compassion with each other because... If not, we're, we're all going to be hermits and we're all going to lock ourselves away and we're all going to be like, hey, get away from me. No one no one listens to me. No one cares about me, but whatever. Like, no, like we're all here for each other. And, and that's what we should be doing. That's what we should be promoting into the world. Like compassion, positivity. Because we can't do it alone. Right. No, we think we can. That's the problem. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's the, that's when we get depressed. You're right. You know, and I, I th I've thought that multiple times, too, until, <clears throat> you know, I've sought professional help through therapy. You know, I started going to N.A. The healing process is tough. You know, I wasn't even ready to do it until eight years into active addiction. It's tough because you, you have to admit that you're wrong. You know, no one likes doing that. No one likes being wrong because we, we put too much pressure on ourselves to be perfect, which is stupid, <laughs> you know. I don't, I don't know where this notion of perfection comes from, but it's unreachable, especially the expectations of where we think we need to be. You do need to handle these situations with a little more forgiveness, which is what I tend to be writing about a lot more lately because I'm not perfect. I got down on myself because I took months off from the podcast, you know. I don't post a lot of content. I always tell myself, if you're going to take your dream seriously, then do it. And when you start letting yourself down, you get down on yourself, right? And then if you start letting yourself down outside of your dreams and like your relationships, your relationship with yourself, I'm like, well, I'm smoking cigars. I'm eating ice cream and playing video games. I'm not doing shit. I don't respect myself, you know? And then you dig a deeper hole each time and you forget to forgive yourself, you know? You forget to lend a helping hand out to yourself you know i always have this like dichotomy in, inside of me of like you know there's two different johns which i'm starting to think that they're one now but when i am down i would like the healed version of myself to hold a hand out to me and be like yo dude it's okay 
What are you tripping for? Right. You know, you don't have to get down about this shit. Learn that you can overcome things, you know, and we forget that. And we, we use social media, we use drugs, we use fast food, pharmaceuticals, we use these things to numb us and we hole up. And that's not healthy. When I, when I turned 21, I, I started working at like a dispensary. And there was like all these positive things about it. Like, oh, it's great medical benefits. It's all these benefits. And that's, that's the hole a lot of people get in, like my, myself included. And when I came to the realization of I'm just filling this void of, inside of me with, with stuff, with like pleasure, pleasurable stuff, it's because I was trying, I was moving away from myself and my goals and my ambitions, like stuff that I've been wanting to tell myself or been telling myself to do, like, hey, you can do this. And I've been filling it up with drugs or, you know, social media. So being able to, I really want to say, like, when I started working at the dispensary, I saw all these happy people and I was like, I want to, I want to be happy like them. Like, I want to. I want to do these things like uh, th th there's so many creative people out there and there's just a trap of a lot of people just f saying saying yeah i'm gonna do these things and then after being there for so long it's like hold up a year has passed two years have passed i'm in the same spot i was at when i first started here everybody's at the same spot like i thought you wanted to do this i thought like you guys had all these ideas and yet we're not moving forward so that's when I like stepped back and I was like, all right, yeah, it does get my creative juices flowing, whatever. Yeah, I do get great ideas, but am I putting in the work to those? Am I putting in that effort? No. So being able to like just step back and say, okay, let's put in the work. Let's put in the effort and let's do something. Like, let's not just say it. Let's not just think it. Like we have all these ideas. Let's, let's do it. And I don't know where I was going with that, but yeah. <laughs> it's, it's tough to train yourself to do that, mm -hmm. you know, especially with weed, because like you said, it gets the creative juices flowing. I connected my using with my creativity and over the years it actually diminished it because I was relying on it and I got upset that I wasn't doing what I said. You know, I said for fucking almost eight years I was going to be a rapper, yeah. you know, and I worked on my writing and my freestyling but i didn't put it into action i didn't go out and and meet other people who were doing the same thing because i was just holed up like a hermit and not until i got sober was i actually able to put in that work i'm like all right ideas are great action is better you know execution execution yeah doing it and it's tough because we, we fantasize with these ideas. We're like, ah, this is great. You know, like our thoughts are uh, addictive, you know, or because you can feel from your thoughts. Right. And then you have a good idea and then you tangent into the, some fantasy world where that idea worked out perfectly. And you're like, ah, that's the me now from that idea. And you're you're daydreaming, you know, and you're not putting it into action. You're like, well, that's enough action for today. You know, <laughs> the, the, the imaginary me put in all of this work over the next like five to 10 minutes. Well, I'm done for the day. Right. I'm just going to watch TV now. You know? Right. That distraction of just moving away from that man. Like I did live this. Like why, why am I even tripping now? Like it, it was there and now it's gone. But yeah, I want that every day. Like, you know, I want to be able to live that. And so, yeah. I think I've, I definitely like once you started the podcast and like we met and stuff, like I was, just, I, I came kind of to that. I was already at that realization of like, I need to stop smoking so much, but that like, you've kind of helped me realize like, cause I, like a lot of people around me, a lot of circles that I have would be like, Hey, let's, I have this idea. We should do it. And I'm like, yeah, dope. And then don't hear it from them ever again. Don't hear anything about it. And it's like when, when we met you and you're like, Oh, I do a podcast. I was like, Oh, that's dope you know, talking to you about it. And then you asking me for advice, me, you know, asking for advice and then us putting that into action. It's like, that's the, that's the people you need around you. That's the, that's the type of people. That's what people need to hear. It's like, Hey, like, just, just start, like, just, just go like, do it. Like, and being able to have those open conversations and that, that compassion and that get those creative juices flowing with each other. Of like, Hey, like I got this idea. Don't know how I'm going to do it. Here's an idea. We bounce off each other and we're like, all right, now let's try it out. 
like we tried so many things and here we are now like some yeah like yeah we, we take a moment like we realize wow like we did this <laughs> i know it's it's trial and error though you know it was shaky at first but then you start doing it and like what aiden was saying on the podcast before like he he quit weed he smoked a lot of weed obviously and you know the drinking and stuff and he was saying like yeah i think sobriety is like a prerequisite for any type of success which i totally understand if you've had like an issue using you know i know people who can manage it and then i know people who can't manage it and i think having that conversation with yourself about like hey there are some things i know i can't do and getting rid of something like that is such a huge milestone when you're able to give up a habit that has controlled you that internal victory to yourself is, is i i can't even describe how i've how far i've come in terms of that so to hear that you're also feeling the same way about weed you know i don't i don't talk shit about weed i don't really talk shit about drugs on the feel free podcast because I wouldn't be the person I am today if it wasn't for them. You know, they had a lot of negative impacts on my life, but I wouldn't have the perspective on the world. I wouldn't have the perspective on other people if I didn't do those things. And there are people out there who can enjoy them, and that's great. And I know a lot of people who have given them up up these habits and have done amazing things with their life so i'm i'm a little biased if if people come to me with like a dream or an aspiration right or i want to do this you know the execution is crucial and getting rid of pleasure seeking habits in order to maximize your effort that's that's key like i i mean there like you're saying there, there is a lot of people who who can who can indulge and can do these things but a lot of people like they see that and they're like i'm one of those people i, I can do the same thing like yeah I, I can fulfill my dreams and do drugs like that's totally cool but they, over time they don't see that execution they don't have that execution there they just don't they don't put it into action they just sit down waiting for that moment to happen and it's like i see myself in in a lot of those peoples and I don't I'm not saying I'm gonna go sober like I don't I don't picture myself being able to be sober because I do still get some of those benefits from like smoking I like especially when I'm doing like my my workout and stuff I do feel like it gives me some sort of like relief and like being able to like chill out and and be present mm -hmm. but I, I mean it was a struggle for me for sure where I was just like doing it every day doing it first thing in the morning till I go to bed because I was like yeah it helps me be present. It helps me enjoy life. It helps me be happy. And then I came to the realization, it's like, I just want to be happy. I don't want to have to take something to be that me, that version of me that I want. So it, it's, I mean, it's a, it's a battle because you have to face some demons. You have to go through your own head and being like, why aren't you happy right now? Why, why do you feel angry? Why do you feel sad? Like, and answer those questions and get an honest answer from yourself because no one's going to tell you. No, no one's going to give you the answer. So being able to take that time of discomfort, like, and just being able to like put it into action and being able to be true to yourself and give yourself that, that dream of, Hey, let's put these these things these words into action these ideas into actions let's stop living in fantasy world and let's let's realize where we're at right now and let's let's get to where we want to be it gets easier to ask those questions when you're sober or you know when you're not doing it all day every day which is one of the reasons possibly why we smoked all day every day or did drugs all day every day yeah. because those questions were arising and we're like i don't want to answer that yeah you know? i don't want to face that i'm here right now yeah. what do you mean <laughs> right. you know and that's it's just a fallacy you know but you know working on yourself the self-development journey is uh it's discomforting but it is extremely rewarding especially you know you've listened to the episodes with brandon and, and aiden and and muncie as well and it's just amazing what being able to answer those questions gets you you know you can go your whole life without asking yourself 
those questions. And I'm not sure we give enough credit to people for asking those questions. And I hope that by people listening or watching the podcast that they can put their phones down or their screens down and really just sit there without any substance at all, just sit there and ask themselves, like, what do I have to do in order to love myself? Or what do I have to do in order to feel free? Right. Why don't I feel free? A lot of people don't have those, those don't have those questions imprinted in them. They're just in fantasy mode. So I feel like this podcast, it does do that. And like, it just needs to reach that person and it will eventually because of the digital footprint. Like someone's going to come into this at any of your episodes and be like, hold, hold on. Like I resonate with this and, and just fine and be like, all right. Like they're telling me I can do these things. They're telling me like, hey, we got to start. I, I, I get these questions in my head that I've never answered. And you can do those things. You can put in the effort. Like just take a, take a moment and really just let let those those questions marinate in your mind and and then put action to it <laughs> right and also ask for help like we said can't do it all alone when those questions come around don't get scared of the questions and don't get scared of how you might answer them you know like i said being wrong sucks but it's the only way you're going to learn is when you're wrong you know can't always be right it's stupid it's also about like your community too like i feel like a lot of people like in your, in your friend circles, they're just going to be like, you're fine. It's okay. We're all going through the same thing. We're all here. But it's like, take a moment and look like, well, where are we all at? We, we all have these dreams and we need to hold these, each other accountable. And we need to be able to tell each other and be honest with each other. It's like, hey, I know you're trying your hardest and I know you're doing a lot, but you can do more. And, and, if you when times when you can't do more, that's okay. But don't give up. Don't stop. Like don't give up on yourself. Like keep going. And we're here for each other. Like let I'll give you my advice. I'll let you know my struggles. But be honest with me. Don't just dig. Don't don't feed into my fantasy of like ah oh, yeah I'm fine. I'm doing good. Like because you know my dreams. You know where I want to be at. You need to tell me hey you've been slacking a little bit, and that's okay. Like I'm not gonna. Like if, if you're if you tell your friend and you're honest with them and you're like you've been slacking and they're like ah, f this dude like I'm not I'm not gonna even talk to this person no more. Were they really like your friend? Like they're like no right. like they don't want to see you do what we've all had in our mind to do, and a lot of you lose a lot of people when you take in those actions because they get this version of like they feed off this version of they thought who you were and they're like hold on why is he why is this person doing these things? That's not you. Like, you don't do that. And that you in internalize that. And you're like, oh, like, maybe I can't, maybe, maybe I shouldn't. I'm, let me just stay low. Let me do what I, what I've always done. And I'll be fine. Cause then I won't be uncomfortable. Then I'll just live in fantasy world or. Yeah. That's fucked. Me. Yeah. That's fucked. Yeah. I, uh, calling people out on their bullshit, including myself, <laughs> you know, you have to have those people. There's always going to be, people in your life that are going to say things are okay and that's okay too you know you got to have some chill motherfuckers but you also got to have some people that are going to push you and call you out if you're slacking i'm very grateful for having those people in my life just because someone calls you out on your bullshit right there it's not like you're like you're right i'm learning move forward sometimes you got to let it marinate a little bit you know i do hope that with uh the podcast i don't want people to come here and think automatically that you're going to get in shape like some Marvel superhero, some Greek demigod, or you're going to make millions of dollars, or you're going to like, we're not, I'm not here to promote some type of fantasy world. I'm literally here to promote a healthy life, whether that's mentally, physically, or emotionally, financially, just to the point where we stop using substances or negative thought processes in order to hold us down we're trying to feel free you got to understand what you're trying to free yourself from and then come up with a plan surround yourself with positive people or even seek professional help like it's 2024 we have the resources to to live better 
you know, we just have to use them properly, which we don't know how to do at the start, which it gets discouraging. And then we go scorched earth and we're <laughs> like, ah, well, fuck it. You know, I don't, I don't know what to do. And you stay low and you keep doing the same shit you've been doing. Right. But you got to start stacking small daily wins and Brandon and Aiden say this all the time, you know, just make your fucking bed. I'm not a prop. And I'm not, I'm not, I don't make my fucking bed. <laughs> all right. They, they make their bed. And I also changed my morning routine in the last two weeks and having a few things just to be held accountable for on a daily basis, like just a, a, a W, a, a victory, you know, those build up over time. Then you start trusting yourself again and you start feeling proud of yourself, you know, not like pretentious or prideful ego, like I'm better than people, but you take pride in the fact that you're alive, mm -hmm. you know, which for a long time and a lot of people struggle with, you know, because we beat ourselves up. But, yeah, try and find one or two things to win each day and be grateful for it. Yeah, when you when you get those wins, like, you are present and you're, like, you're not in a negative space. You're, you're in a positive space. And when you're in a, when the more people that are in a positive space, they can give that to others. They have more patience. They have more time to just be like, all right, being able to notice someone's having a bad day. I'm not going to take that and go off on them or I'm not going to take that personally. I'm not, I understand you're having a bad day and I've, I've been there. Trust me. But yeah, I'm going to, I want to fill my routine. I want to fill my life with positive reinforcement for myself and be accountable on myself so that others can do the same. And like, like you said, it's not coming from like an egotistical thing. Like, yeah, but I want to be confident. I want to be happy. Like, if some people think like, oh, this this guy's cocky, like, I'm sorry. Like, I, I, <laughs> I'm not trying to be cocky, but at the same time, I want to be cocky because I remember when I was younger, like I was I was so cocky. Like, I was like, oh, I'm the most confident person. And that's when I truly felt happy because I, I was accountable to myself. I was telling myself I'm going to do these things and I was doing them. And the older we get, we stop doing those things or we, we fall back or what life happens and then you're not and then you get in like oh i'm not i'm not like how i used to be well you get scorched earth like oh i'm gonna start just filling my day with a whole bunch of drugs a whole bunch of video games a whole bunch of stuff to just not live in the present moment and so yeah i feel like this podcast i feel like people just being able to live a healthy life just helps everybody live that life and helps everybody feed off that energy and not like you said it's just not coming from like a self-centered area it's like hey i i i under i understand i've been there but like let's all get to this position of being present being compassionate being happy with each other and not not so judgmental like right i mean we fall into that trap of judging ourselves and each other mm -hmm. it's a slippery slope though but we're training we're, we're retraining ourselves in order to to be healthy again i think the millennial generation the gen z generation i think we realize how important health is again you know because health wasn't always i mean emotional health mental health physical health like these things weren't huge topics of discussions for humanity because it was all about survival at that point and now we have too much time on our hands and then we we take advantage of our health in negative manners and then it spirals outwards like how we treat ourselves is how we end up treating other people too so once we're able to learn how to treat ourselves properly with love and forgiveness and compassion then we can spread that to other people mm -hmm. you know and it's contagious you know there are people who don't like to see other people smile, you know, and that's that's what they're going through, you know. They're either having they're having a bad day or they're they're going through some shit, you know. You can't hold them accountable for that because we've been there, right? But then there are people who see and feel your positivity, and it's infectious, and they're like, "Well, I want that," because I get that from people in my life too, and it's inspiring, which has helped me over the last couple months. I'm like, I know I can be there. I just have to. Hold myself accountable, stay consistent. And I think putting my health above everything else has been really helpful. 
I'm not getting down about the content creation right now. I'm not getting down about where the podcast is or planning and all this crap. Like, I just want to wake up each day and learn to be as healthy as I possibly can in all things I have named physical, emotional, mental, financial. If those wellness categories are hit and my relationships are also in a healthy state, then that's a victory for me, you know? Then I can start affecting the other aspects of my life, like my dreams and aspirations and and stuff. So you got to find a process that works for you. Yeah, I mean, like uh, like I've been telling you, like how I've been trying to just be present and feel happy and present. It's because like at the end of the day, yeah, I have these big dreams and like I want to make a big streaming or in my content creation. I want to be able to have that my full time job. But if it doesn't happen, I don't want to be where I'm like, oh, my life is over. I didn't make it. I'm not happy. Like I, that's not that's not the end goal. Like I want to be able to use my platform to be able to spread positivity and whoever reaches that platform. Glad you found me. I'm glad, you know, you're in this space of positivity. I'm, I'm glad I can give you those moments of just positivity, happiness and compassion. And if it doesn't make it big, hey, at least some people were able to share that with me. At, at least I'm I'm still financially fine. I'm still happy. I'm still healthy mentally, physically. Like th- that's that's the end goal. Being being healthy, being happy. Like that's the end goal, really. But if that can be my job, you know, that would that would just be a bonus. Honestly, that would just be like, eh, you know, I really made it, made it. But like, yeah, it's it's such a it's such a struggle that I still going through you know and, and it's hard but i'm taking those moments and i'm just like all right taking step by step like building my routine like i'm not perfect like you know <laughs> but i'm gonna i'm gonna make sure I'm, I'm being accountable to myself and i'm gonna make sure i'm i'm still putting in that work as much as i can and hopefully people can do the same and just being grateful yeah your dad always says that being grateful man like he does. He he has a lot of gems of knowledge. He does for for how crazy he is, you know. And uh, he's a good guy. <laughs> he's a good guy. He is a good guy. Yeah, he, he's funny. Um, we will be having him on the podcast soon as well. So the world should look forward to to having my father on the podcast. If it makes it through the editing process, <laughs> we'll see. that's right. Um, I think we hit a lot of good points in this conversation. Um, is there anything you want to say to the listeners about staying present or why it's important to stay present? It helps you ease up on the anxiety feeling. Like it helps you calm down. It helps with your nerves and being able to just be patient and not be scorched earth at every miserable thing that happens to you. Like thing, bad things are going to come, bad things are going to happen. And the more present you are, the more patient you are, the easier it's going to be to handle those situations. A lot of people can't meditate and that's totally fine. Like, but do something that just help you be present, whether it's a walk, whether it's listening to music, because then you, 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 people feed off that energy and you can give more to the world. You can br- bring more positivity to the world instead of being this anxious, you know, angry person. Like, chill out, ease up, be a good person. Ease up, be a good person. <laughs> Hell yeah, I like it. I really appreciate you coming on. This was a great episode, honestly. We hit a lot of good points. Staying present, compassion, understanding forgiveness, feeling free. Chasing your dreams pretty much hit everything that the Feel Free podcast is about. So I think with that, we're going to end for today. Really appreciate everybody coming out for the episode. Uh, I will be dropping links to his handles for his social media. Give him a follow for some inspirational and streaming goodness. And y'all know the drill. Stay up and feel free. (laughs) 